So it's that time of the day again, it's time to do some path work and other things that I really needed to do on this coaster thing of a jig. And this is going to be one of those annoying, boring episodes that I don't even want to do. Like, honestly, YouTube is all about fun and I definitely really enjoy doing all of this. But there are just some things that you need to get over in order to get to the fun stuff and actually finish your roller coaster, which of course is loads of fun as well. Just looking back at it and stuff like that is basically all already worth actually trying to make something but mm, I feel like I really need to finish up on the fences that I have but first of all I saw this and my OCD doesn't quite like this so I'm going to fix this also uh, I usually talk all the freaking time and non-stop basically but I am going to kind of cut that down in this episode simply because multiple reasons but one of them is being the fact that I don't really have anything to talk about at some point and I'm not sure whether I really want to just randomly talk about other random things. And then there's the fact that I burnt my tongue and I still don't feel really comfortable talking and moving it around and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's basically that. And speaking of fences, I don't really know exactly what to use. I think I'm just going to go with um, branches again. Yeah, I guess. I don't think there's anything better in here, so I'm just going to go with the wooden fences, honestly. They kind of worked, in a sense. Now, I only need conforming pieces for the straight parts, so it should do to just conforming pieces for this, and just regular ones for other sections. So, here goes nothing. Only disadvantage, only disadvantage to doing this is the fact that you, that you do need to place the poles. I don't think I even want to do that, no. Plus, it doesn't look as amazing if I have two of the same fences on both sides. Actually, I think I'm gonna not do this. I might use Fire Guys planters. Now that I'm thinking about it, might as well try that. Let's see. Always just takes a bit of um, trial and error. So really, uh, I would suggest that you never just go with a fence right away. Just try multiple types of fences and. Just in the end decide what you're going to go for, but really it takes some trial and error to get the perfect thing. Mm. So this honestly isn't the best thing there. Not that bad. But I'm not going to go with I'm not going to go with this. No. I should try station gyms for. Hmm. I should still get more fence sets because I haven't nearly gotten. All of the fence sets that are out there but there's just so many things out there and i really need to pick some things up mm, there should be conforming pieces none of these pieces actually conform so i need to go into no not in here now is it logic would say that you've got the gun but yeah they are in here okay good okay so i'm just gonna mess with that i guess um, I do kind of want to change it, but maybe, uh, I actually like that. It's probably better than having wood on both sides. Yeah, I'm just going to go with this. Pretty cool. And I'm already going to do the other side as well, simply because I want to get that out of the way so I can actually move to the non-conforming parts of the fences. Very nice. Now there's... Oh, damn it. I will have problems with that. That's a shame. There's no way I can really get around that. Hmm. Yeah, there's no way I can do that. I'm just gonna have to figure something out. There are barely any fences that also have conforming pieces for the curves. So watch out with that. That's why I said in the beginning that... Having curves that kind of have a slope is generally not a good idea because not many sets go with it. Just like it's generally uh, hard to get diagonal buildings. Of course, building diagonally is a very good idea and it looks great in many cases, but you really need to make sure that you have all the sets that you need because there aren't many sets that actual, actually have diagonal pieces. And if they do, they're somewhat more limited than the normal pieces. So the same goes for buildings as it goes for paths. Watch out with that stuff. But anyway, this is all the um, boring stuff, basically. The things that you've already seen, this is just simple, though. Honestly, that's also a good thing, because I don't really need 
do teach anything new over here, so I'm pretty sure that anybody can really do this. Shouldn't be too quick to say that, but this is not going to be not going to pose problems to many people. Unless of course you've got all the problems. In that case, yes. And like I've said before, I always like to do the curves first, then the diagonals, and then the straight part. I don't know why, I just I, I just find that in general it's just slightly harder to get the right pieces for curves, then diagonals are somewhat um, more rare than straight pieces, at least with my way of doing path work. So I start off with the more rare and harder to place elements, and then in the end I do all the easy things. I don't know why, it just works in a nice way. It also makes it easy to see at the end where you have to um, place straight pieces and stuff like that. Though honestly the order doesn't really matter that much. This is just what I prefer. And about these fences though, this is um, just something that I can only say about these fences. You can actually uh, layer these so you can actually place one here and one half a tile over here if you don't want to go through that hassle of finding the half fence yet um, in the menu. It doesn't really matter, you get no clipping. The only uh, disadvantage to it is that you have a few more LODs but that really won't give you any more left. It's pretty much, yeah, nothing. So it doesn't really matter. Only if you really have lag like, problems you should watch out with actually um, layering things but in this case no, especially with my laptop since it's incredibly crappy but it can still handle this thing easily so it doesn't really matter. And just a half one here. Now you can see some slight differences but something like this is generally something that you won't really notice in pictures or video so it doesn't really matter honestly. Now of course if you do get um, like a greater gap like this it's already going to be um, more of a problem, though honestly I don't have any normal curve pieces for that, so I can't deal with that, I can't do anything about it, but that's just something to, something to notice. Hmm, yeah, and there we go, just more curve stuff. I'm gonna uh, use the same fences over here, so, place this as well. And as always, I start off with the curves, and then start filling out the straight thingies on. Now, I don't think I really want to have a sidewalk over here. So I'm just going to leave that out. Now of course I might later on place an attraction over here but I, I'm i not too sure about that so as long as you're not sure what you want to build something just um, think that it doesn't exist. It's That's just what I always like to do simply because if you don't build it after all then it's, a, it's been a good thing that you've already kind of built around it and if you do want to build something it's not going to be too hard. It's better to have something already than to have to open all those sets later on if you really decide that you don't want to build something. That generally takes a lot of time and it's pretty annoying sometimes. It's funny how people always uh, diagonal pieces in many sets are actually half a tile wide and they're not considered a half diagonal they're considered a full diagonal it's, it's pretty funny. Though not all sets do that. Just something that I've noticed. So, yeah, I guess that's also good to note that many sets, um, you might think that there is no full diagonal um, piece, but really half diagonal pieces are often the only ones that they have. So, you don't really need to look for any full diagonal pieces because not all of the sets have them. It doesn't really matter that much. It doesn't take that much time. Only if you have a very large diagonal, well, straight line, I guess, that it really saves time if you have a full piece. Does that look good? Yeah. I guess. Mm, now, I used wood over here, so I'm just going to keep using the wood for that. So I'm going to have to close this and open Brian's set again. I really like this set. Great for ice fences. Mm, oh damn it! This is something I've n I've talked about earlier. Yeah, I've not. This is um. 
This was me being stupid. Hmm. Right. Now there are multiple ways of going around this though, honestly. Well, I think I had an idea at the moment, uh, though I can't be certain. I'm pretty sure that would be my past self um, well, way of thinking. Is adding a hedge or some other way of vegetation stuff over here. So I think I'm going to go with that. And what is this fence doing over here? Get out of there. What are you doing? Um, so, what is that? I am pretty sure it is in Station Gym's Gardening 2. So I'm not sure whether it's over here, which doesn't appear to be, or over at the objects section, which it probably is, because I'm looking for some small hedges. Iron Station Gym's Gardening 2, and there we go, beautiful hedges. Love these things. So, um, am I going to do some tutorial stuff on this? Yeah. Basically, these hedges have the same curves as Moby's, as Moby's curves and Shy Guy's curves. Um, there's something to notice is that there are two different types of curves that many sets, uh, custom scenery sets usually use. You have the more common one, the Shy Guy's curves that you've seen before and everybody's very used to, but also you have Moby's curves. And they, they are a little bit less common, but Moby uses them and some other sets do as well. Uh, they have the loose curve L and R pieces and stuff like that. Now this might be very confusing at first, but this is really something to get used to and something to notice, uh, something to note while um, using this set. Also you have the in and out and that means nothing else than the out piece is really on the edge of a uh, full tile and the in piece is somewhere over here, so it's more in the center. Uh, I can kind of demonstrate that, yeah. You can see that the out piece um, really is over there and the in piece is within a tile. Really kind of different. But basically, yeah, the name already makes sense, kind of tells you what it is. And basically, this has an effect since a full hedge can either be on this tile or on this tile. So if you're making a curve that goes like over here, you'll need um, basically an out piece for the left hedge and an in piece for the right hedge. That's basically how it works. And this can take some getting used to. And yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to that. Now this is very handy though, because these loose curves can really help you in some some certain situations in which other things might not. And even though they have some weird placements that uh, behave in a strange ways with the grid, as you can see, you can really fit them snugly around this little, well, curve, I call it. So I'm just gonna go for that and just get the diagonal and straight pieces to finish this off. Ah, uh, that's very nice. Since I like smooth things, smooth things are really great. One of the best things to do in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, and if you really succeed at this, everybody's going to love you, right? Well, at least for that already. I, sh I can't promise that, but really, I would. Is um, to hide the fact that it uses a grid as much as possible. So if you use many curves and stuff like that, and it's really not obvious that Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 has a grid in the way that it does, and then... Your ride basically already nailed it at that point. So definitely try to add as many smooth things and curves and stuff like that as you can. And also diagonal buildings can help with this, but once again diagonal buildings can be a pain. So yeah, it's a double-edged sword in that sense. Now I need to, even I need to figure out how this works because I'm, I don't really work with these sets much. You know, this should work. Honestly, if you want to get my opinion, because now I'm blabbering about this shit anyway, uh, I don't really like the curves in Moby's packs. Um, the Moby's curves are just a bit weird to work with, and many of Moby's walls are therefore also not compatible with uh, Shy Guy's planters and many f um, other fence sets and wall sets. So that's a bit unfortunate and annoying, but in some cases, especially when you need those offset pieces, it really helps out. Uh, I was building skyscrapers for Silver City, and even in that case, Moby's Walls have helped me out with some nice off-piece set, uh, off-set pieces. Well, I messed up on that one, so that was really awesome. Now I think I'm just gonna actually finish the head job, diagonal piece, and probably one of one of Shiger's pieces, honestly, because need some. 
We need an out peak. That we don't because that looks weird. Don't exactly know what to do with this. Not like get a little hedge piece over here. Thank you very much. Yeah, that should work, honestly. That's good enough. Uh is that floating? Kind of floating. Not too much though. I don't I don't really care, I guess. Uh it's not floating too much. And when I add more ground shrubbery and foliage, um, it's not going to be too noticeable, so screw it, I'm going to go for that. I don't think I really want to add a hedge over here. Yeah, that hedge over there is pretty much more there. So, it's time to finish up other things. Um, now that we're doing the boring things, let's finish this once and for all, and do the very, um, well, placing stuff on the parts. We need more lamps and stuff like that. Now, of course, once again, we've we've got so many lamp sets in the Rollercoast Echo 3 community. It really just depends on what your personal preference is. Um, hmm, I don't I don't actually know. There are just many sets that I like for different themes. I like these lamps though, so I'm probably going to go with these all around the park. Also, they're not as widely used. Honestly, I um I always prefer to use sets that are somewhat more uncommon than others and. Odhine's lights kit is pretty much one of the most overused sets in the game. So sometimes I just avoid that set for the sake of avoiding what everybody else, what everybody else uses. I know it's it's a very hipster thing to do, but okay, sorry, I just do that sometimes. It's also a bit um, wall breaking in a sense of well, there's not really a well. It's not really a fourth war in Roller Coaster Echo 3, but it's kind of um, sometimes it's it's immersion breaking when you see certain custom scenery sets that you see everybody using. It just takes away from the overall creativity of the ride. Sometimes it just takes away the idea of this of oh this is an awesome thing that somebody made and just kind of places an idea in my head of oh he used that custom scenery set hmm I recognize that uh, I don't know I just don't like that it's like how the Wilhelm scream just kind of takes me out of the movie when I'm watching a movie when I'm like fully immersed in the story and all that and suddenly you hear the Wilhelm scream and you can't help but laugh at it and then that's pretty much good moment ruined um yeah, this is good enough for over here, I guess, but I would want to use some other over there. Do I? I don't know. Also, somebody uh, told me to add um, planters on these things, and at first I was like, yeah, that's a good idea, because you have the hanging baskets that you can use for the lamps in gardening, but you can't use that for this specific type of light, so... There's no doing that. You can, though, use that for the other lights. Uh, I'll just give that a short demonstration of that. For example, you have this light, and it has the steel beams on it. And um, you can hang it over there. That's pretty cool. Except the little beams on this one are way too short to do that. Also, I'm pretty sure this lamp does it as well. Yeah. This lamp does it as well, so that's pretty cool. But, once again, it doesn't work with that. Now, I don't exactly want to use this anymore, so I'm just going to see if there's anything else. I feel like I should buy something from this. No, too small, too dark. But the Efteling lights might be out. Though they're a bit small too. I feel like, maybe if I support it. Hmm. That could work, honestly. That could definitely work. Though I might also try a different lamp. It would definitely work. Hmm. And there's also lamp 24. Which is slightly bigger. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the slightly bigger one. Now, as you can see, of course, they're floating. Stupid. But, that's also something that I kind of didn't want to talk about. But now, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably a good thing to mention. Sometimes you... you you, you, the custom scenery set that you're trying to use, basically, it doesn't really have the things that you want it to have. Like, it doesn't exactly have specific pieces or like these lamps. They're just too small for what I'm trying to make. And I really love it when people start mixing custom scenery sets to make objects. So 
especially with lamps and stuff like that, you can mix certain sets in order to make new something new. I've seen people use Moby Steel Jungle and then adding lamp posts to that and um, flowers from other sets and stuff like that. It's just really awesome sometimes to use c custom scenery sets to create new objects and though I'm not doing any of that complicated stuff over here, I'm just trying to find something to kind of make this lamp a bit higher with, uh, it's always good to know that um, you can really mix up sets really and it's really, aw really awesome sometimes. Now this doesn't quite work honestly so I need to find something else. Maybe a post from one of the one of the path sets honestly. And yeah, this is one of the downsides to doing that. You really need to find something. You really need to mess around with certain stuff until you've actually found the thing that you really wanted. And this would have worked if only it were a bit bigger. Oh, that's a shame. So you still need to find something else. Maybe this iron thing. Honestly, it might still be very small. Yeah, that's very small. That's not going to help out. Uh, in that case, maybe the ornamental thingies is something that's slightly smaller than all of these things. Hmm. That doesn't quite work out either. Um. Hmm, this is actually quite a problem. Maybe. Now that I'm thinking about it, the station gym post. I don't really know posts in here, but maybe the more fencing does have some stuff I might be. Ooh, it's too big though. Uh, if only it had. Does this one have a smaller one or not? Because if it does, yes, that is actually that is actually that might actually work. Oh, that's actually really nice, especially from like a small distance. That works out. Works out nicely. The lamp on itself is just a bit too small, especially considering the fact that the other lamps are slightly bigger, so I think this works out. Yeah, really nice. Now I did notice that I forgot to add some fences over here. So I'm going to quickly fix that before I forget about this completely. Uh, it's a good thing I still have the set opened, honestly. That's funny. And I need to change the colours again though. I think this was it. Yeah. And there we go. A couple of fences. And then it's time to add some benches and then call it a day. I'm going to do the fun stuff later. So planters and stuff like that. I really like doing planters. And once again, I like doing flowers too. Flowers are awesome. Oh, benches. Benches are hard to do sometimes. But I think I'm going to do... I I'm, I'm think I'm just going to use the same bench. Um, throughout the park. Many people use Fotheen's benches and I often do that as well but for this particular park I just feel like I want to use um, gardening two benches so I'm just gonna go with that. Let's see one FTC. I love how it has the uh, the gradual color change over here. It just gradually goes from green to brown or depending on what colors you have something else. I'm going to use the brown only. So, do I want to do this? This is also pretty cool, honestly. Or maybe with some red or something. No, not red. That's too too colorful. I have a better idea. Bottom is going to be black, maybe. And don't change the. Oh, that actually, I actually like that. So it might even be better if I change it to grey. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, I'm just going to go with that. I love it. And I'm just going to place a couple of benches over here. I forgot to place lamps over here, so I need to go back to... Um, actually, I don't need to go back to anything. Same set. Nice. Life is very nice. Hmm, pretty good. Yeah. And I'm just going to leave this area uh, for now. Though, I would like to add some benches over here for people to look at the roller coaster. And I still want to fix something about this wall because even though I added those rocks and those pillars, it's still one big, empty, boring wall. So, need some brushing up some fun stuff on it. And obviously, since people are going to want to look at the roller coaster here as well, and this is kind of a boulevard in a sense, 
Oh wow, that is oh whatever. Can't see it. So it's not there. And now of course you're not gonna place it. That don't want the lamp to ruin your view. This should work fine. No, this placement is a bit old. Oh well, whatever. And for this I'm just gonna well, face the path I guess. It's the most logical thing to do. And maybe this is too close to the path. I'll easily put the benches over there because there's no fence or anything. Pretty safe to do that. Only if there's a fence, you should watch out with that because sometimes the bench will kind of go into the fence and flip, stuff like that. Basically, um, so it, you don't have that problem with this set. With some sets, the bench will actually go um, over the line of the border between two tiles. So it's actually going to go into the fence and that's just generally something that you'd avoid. But for this it works fine, so that's all cool. And over here. Now I prefer placing the benches on sidewalks, so I'm just going to leave the areas somewhat bare, but I still want to place a couple. Benches are still awesome. Regardless of whether there's a sidewalk or not. And some diagonal actually in the middle. Don't want to put benches in. And like I said, don't want to put benches in. What did I just do? Over here. I don't know about that. Honestly, that's a bit weird. Other than that though, it's pretty much fine. Now I just need to finish those lights. And of course, I also need to play some litter bins. And that's something I'm going to talk about in a minute. But first I need to get this, these lamps. And I'm just going to place them on the sidewalk. Because I placed them on the sidewalk over there as well. Pretty funny. Sidewalk not only functions as a sort of, well, fancy something next to the path, but it also functions as something that on which you place pretty much anything which you want on the paths, but you don't want to be in the middle of the way. So that's pretty funny. Now I made these things grey, so I messed up on that one. God damn it! I'm gonna have to replace all of them. I also really need to finish this little sidewalk before I really move on. So that I really get everything out of the way that I need to do. Yeah, so I'm going to finish that border real quick. And then do some small litter bin stuff, action, and some small other things. Uh, that's pretty much it, I just need to finish the sidewalk. It's going to be a pain. Anyway, litter bins. So, Station Gyms Gardening also has amazing litter bins. So, thank you, Set, for pretty much having everything and making this very easy for everyone. Now, we've got this. This one is actually good enough. All of them are actually good. Or, oh, yeah. The wooden one, that's a wooden one. And even this one is wooden. So, that's really good, at least for this park. Of course, if you have a more modern park, this is not really going to work out. But, in this case, it's going to work out fine, so I'm just going to go for either one of these things. Now, this is not really too great. I like this one a lot, so I'm going to go with this one. Really, this just depends on whatever litter bin you like. Now, I can see that I already placed some one over there. Hmm, that's strange. And, now something that I wanted to say about this is that sometimes I see people spamming litter, litter bins everywhere, all around the park, and really you don't need that many litter bins. So it looks a bit weird if you have litter, bin, litter bins everywhere and it's pretty much a fresh fest. So I would, I would say try to avoid that, really. Sometimes people feel like inclined if their paths are somewhat e empty and they have like a fear of emptiness, they just want to fill it with stuff. That's generally what I have as well, but Watch out with that stuff with litter bins because uh, it's it's too much very quickly. This might already be too much, but I guess my gets me in. This sidewalk needs some litter. So. 
this one's. Uh, that should do. No. That should definitely do. Oh, wait, this one. Um, now, also, a common thing to do is to kind of place them next to benches. People are going to sit on them and eat and throw their, throw their shit away, basically. Unless you put litter bins next to the benches. Make sure that people don't make a mess of everything. Yeah, okay, that works. Now, this little sidewalk. Burger. Save the worst for last. Why did I do that? Good old diagonal to straight piece action. Over here. Yeah, that's kind of... That's kind of glitching. That's way glitchy. Oh, God. Oh, screw you. I don't know how to fix that, actually. There's no fix for that other than using conforming sets. But I don't have conforming sets or pieces for this. And I don't want to change all of that, so I'm going to just procrastinate that or just leave it out altogether because I honestly... Uh, I don't want to deal with that all the time. This works. And need to flip it for the other side. And get that other... Not that hard. It's really not something that you really... It's just something that you need to put time in. It's just one of those things in which you don't need any talent. You don't need any knowledge of how to do things. You just need to invest time. It's not the, it's not the greatest thing once again. Just something that you have to do. Pathworks. Now, of course, pathworks can be beautiful, amazing, and you can put lots of time in into pathworks. I've done that as well, but that that kind of only goes for when your pathworks is actually when your pathwork is actually uh, the main focus, or at least um, you're making like a central boulevard or something like that. But in many of these cases. I'm just going to fill these with quarters, it honestly doesn't really matter. You can fill half tiles with quarters. It saves polys to fill them with halves and it saves time if you do it in, a, in an efficient way. But it, this, the polys that it saves you, it's pretty much nothing once again. Especially with paths, since paths don't have any polys really. These things are not going to like the game. When you compare, you can, I don't know how many but some custom scenery pieces literally have thousands of faces and a path, a cover only has either two faces or six faces. So you can place hundreds and hundreds of path pieces just to cover for one tree or something like that. So it really doesn't matter too much. Okay, so that looks pretty good, especially this area. I love it. But basically that's it for this episode. And in the next episode, I think I'm going to do some planter stuff and maybe some other fun stuff, maybe some more foliage. So, cool things. So, thank you for watching, guys. Hope you've learned something and see you all in the next one.